In this video, I'm going to introduce setting up just a basic bootstrap document here. Before we actually dive in and start structuring and designing our own bootstrap files, as far as going all out with CSS and responsive web design, I'd like to show you just a demo document and take you through some of the clickable elements that you might be working with whenever you're creating your own documents. Now, Dreamweaver, again, does a lot of the heavy lifting for you on this. So to begin, you're going to go under, well, actually, one step back. Remember, you want to make sure you have that site definition created for your project. I actually decided for these dem next few demo videos, I'm going to go ahead and have multiple um, site definitions here. So I decided to just make one called Bootstrap Demo. The most that I did as far as setting up the project, since we will be working with graphics, is I did make an images folder, downloaded a couple of images. So let's go under File and New. And I'm actually going to zoom in here so that you can see this. But to this point, as far as working with Dreamweaver, we've really focused on just making an HTML document and not really paid attention to the framework here. And we've just said none set the document title and set the document type to HTML5. We kind of let Dreamweaver take care of all of that. Next to it, however, you have Bootstrap. Responsive web design is extremely important in this day and age because you don't know what type of device your audience member is going to use to actually look at your website. Is it going to be on a desktop machine? Is it going to be on a phone? Is it going to be on an iPad? anything along those lines. So integrating Bootstrap with the CSS is extremely important. Bootstrap uses three elements. It uses CSS, which as you can see, it wants to create a new one out of the gate. So for this demo, let's go ahead and just let Dreamweaver create the CSS. But I want to draw your attention to under design. For t this little demo here, I want to include the pre-built layout so you can actually see the elements that get generated. So I'm going to go ahead and zoom back out here and I'm going to say create. Now before I go any further, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to file and I'm going to save this document and I'm going to call this we'll call it bootstrap one. Now, a couple of things I'd like to draw your attention to, and I'm going to go ahead and zoom in again here. First off is what happens in that file panel? What was actually created for you? As you can see here out of the gate, you now have numerous folders that have been generated for you. A CSS, which has the bootstrap framework contained in it. And if you'll notice, there's a little lock there. We cannot go in and change the bootstrap framework, which honestly is a good thing. You don't really want to be messing with that. So you, we can just leave that alone. You also have an images folder that was created that is holding a card image. This is a placeholder graphic. Normally what we would do is we would replace this graphic here. Here is that image folder that I generated. And then here is what we call the JS folder, short for JavaScript. As you can see, it actually generated three brand new files for you as far as laying out your website here. All right, so let's take a look at what actually happened and what was added to Dreamweaver from just a strictly a layout standpoint. So as you can see here, you have a lot of new elements that were just automatically generated for you. You also have a ton of new controls that are available to you as far as the layout goes, where you can add different columns, but also too, you can now click in each of these items and begin to edit not only the text, but also to the general layout here. Let's actually go ahead and preview this in a web browser just so we can see what actually happens and what responsive web design looks like. So you have this fantastic layout here. And what you should be able to do now is as you resize, you see how it's able to change 
regarding your layout here. Like even going to the phone type layout, you can see there that it actually does all of that heavy lifting for you. Now then, let's talk about a little bit as far as your controls are concerned. First things first is up on the top here, you may have noticed that you now have these two kind of colored bars going on here. These are declaring what are called media queries. The media queries are the way that we alert a web browser to what size options are available to us as far as a website's layout, but also to its senses based on the screen resolution that you can set for a specific device. The thing with this though that you have to pay attention to is whenever I'm working with these, I can click on each of these individual ones so that I can actually see and preview while I'm working in the live view and see how it's going to react as far as the layout and scale is concerned. So here, for example, I'm going all the way out here as far as the design goes. And then all the way over at the end here, there is this little filter here just so that you're aware this is letting you know as far as what above here you want to see we really don't need to touch that too much but if it's bothering you seeing like the css and the js files you can hide those if you're afraid you're going to click something now i'm going to come down here as far as the image width here just to show you and you can see the differences as far as how each of the images are being affected here. So these are all elements that you can take into consideration. Lastly, if you just want to make it the entire screen resolution, you can just come all the way to that end there where it says double click for full width. It'll give you the full width here. All right, so let's go ahead and dive in a little bit deeper here as far as what has actually happened. If you remember in a previous video, I had started showing you kind of the basics of the CSS Designer here. So in the CSS Designer now, you can see that our main source here comes from that bootstrap. So if I come on over here and you can see that it actually labels it as read only. So we can't actually make really any big changes as far as color, layout, etc within the bootstrap itself. We'll get to that in another video. But I do want to show you as far as when you start to go in, you can see things such as, for instance, like body. We still have that capability as far as showing all of the different aspects and being able to take a look at, okay, so how is this laid out? What is the document actually working with here. So be aware of that, that you can see what is actually being tweaked, but we may not have much control over that. So the big goal of kind of this pre-made document here is that you can actually come in and it kind of talks you through overall what you can and cannot do. For example here, you have a learn more button here, which is being stored in this specific container here that I generate, that the Dreamweaver generated. Now, you've got a couple of things as far as your controls are concerned in the live view. So over here, you can see that we can actually offset the column. You can visually rearrange, but also too, you have this hamburger here as far as a dropdown goes. And notice here now, you have the capabilities that you can come in and change the HTML elements, but likewise as well, we can use the bootstrap options that are already predefined. And for example, maybe I wanna align the button to the left for some reason. I'm gonna go ahead and recenter it, so I do have some controls over that. Likewise as well, I can change the link so it actually becomes active. 
and those are some of the options there. I can also come in as far as the button itself and you can actually see here I can actually change the text on the button so that it says click me. So also with this as well you can see that you have a lot of different options as far as the text is concerned as far as the structure goes. However, we may not have a lot of controls, which is a good thing, regarding what Bootstrap is actually controlling here. A lot of the elements, as you can see, are grayed out. Again, that Bootstrap option here is read only. For us to take this to the next step here, you're going to need to actually go through and begin adding the elements, but also setting it up where you have Normally, my advice is to set up an additional CSS document with the graphical and design elements that you want to work with here. Some of these do already have, as far as the bootstrap assets, do have the capabilities that you can come in and tweak as needed. However, whenever you're working with the predefined templates, well, yes, you may look at them and say, oh, this is going to make my life so much easier. You really need to understand kind of the bits and pieces that are going into this. So again, to re-emphasize before I show you the next item with this grouping is really the bootstrap CSS document. You can't go in and edit. So this is just kind of like a preview layout of all the goodies that you can work with. One other thing that I want to show you is under file and new. One thing that Dreamweaver also presents to us, and let me zoom in so that you can see this, is the idea of starter templates. One of the things here that you can see is not only do you have some basic and email, but we have specific bootstrap and responsive documents. Now the beauty of these are these are fantastic landing pages or home pages. However, probably the biggest drawback to them, however, is that's it. A landing page very often in web design is designed in a manner that you're not, it's that landing page and then you have the subsequent pages. So the subsequent pages are where you really need to have the firm understanding of bootstrap elements and creating those on the fly. Templates do make your life a lot easier. So for instance here, like if I go ahead and choose, you know, a lot of folks may be interested in portfolios. So let's go with creating a portfolio page. All right, so let me zoom out here so you can see what it generated. So here we go. You've got the nav bar laid out for you. As far as you can see here, you have several different elements. I'll show you in a later video how you can edit those. But let's go ahead and save this document and I'll call this bootstrap. We'll call this uh, pre-made. Let's go ahead and preview this real quick. Once again, really great layout. We can come in, we can rearrange objects and elements. Works perfectly as far as the scalability. But again, similar to its counterpart, you've got a read only going on here. Now, with that in mind, though, you do have some capabilities as far as we can still come in, for instance, here, like if I come into the list based media object here, what you're really looking for is to come in and edit those HTML attributes as far as some of the basics here. However, you are still going to be tied to, for instance, like let's say I grab H1 here. Down at the bottom here, you see that I have my properties panel still active. Oops, I'm gonna go ahead and re-highlight that. Let me come back down here. So here you can see I've got that text backdrop I've also got down here, notice you still can edit the document title, but maybe I want to come in
and try to change the color there. So let's go ahead and zoom out. And you can see now that it has changed all of the heading options here. So one thing that we often do is, yes, it's great that we have this baseline as far as the overall document is concerned. But if we actually want to go in and do some heavy duty editing, we normally generate a brand new CSS document specifically for editing the elements here. So in one of the future videos here, we're going to dive a little bit deeper into that. But for right now, after watching this, I encourage you to go through, look at as far as, you know, file new, take a look at some of the portfolio uh, bootstrap templates here, you know, the e-commerce or the agency, just take a look at them and see how they lay them out. Preview them in the web browser so you can get a feel for some of the different layouts that you can create using bootstrap elements.